I'm going to introduce you to a few aspects of the timeline. Now, as you can see, we've got a few, uh, we've got a couple of clips, a couple of movie clips uh, uh, still here. Uh, we've got a title and a bit of audio, etc. But you'll notice that there's a red line that moves across the skimmer, and uh, this red line um, also uh, moves across any area, if I put it over any clip in the events or the project here then it actually will will change the screen now you can activate this skimmer by this button here and so if i click that off you'll notice that now when i'm moving the uh, the pointer across it doesn't actually skim so this this other area here the playhead wherever i move this now the, uh, whenever i wherever i click the playhead will actually move to that position if i press the space bar just there it actually um, will will move it to that position. Clicking this on and off, it just activates this skimming process. Uh, I can also decide whether in the skimming that uh, I, I have the audio, it's just there like that. And now, it, as you can hear, it will actually make a noise as it skims across. So that's the skimmer and then the audio. Now, you will find that actually you can't just turn on the audio on its own. You have to have the, the, the skimmer operating and then the audio skimmer will actually operate there as well. Now, in terms of displaying clips here, this is a very useful button here because it changes the duration on display. As I move it up here, then the, um, the distance between these two bars actually um, increases. So that would become every 10 seconds so it kind of elongates the clip uh, by changing this here and uh, so um, if for example that you wanted to be more precise in where you were actually looking at uh, the clip then you can actually move that button across there um, and then you've got the clip appearance uh, the actual height um, you can you can take the height down and it depends really how much media you've got in here and this button here show waveforms uh, when you click that 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 on and off so here we have the clips without the waveforms and then if I click that on it uh, again generally um, I would leave the, the waveforms um, uh, on display because um, that, that, that can be helpful as well then down here in the same way um, in the project in the project area we've got the same the same sort of thing if I click these two you can see that the clip appearance um, will actually change we've got a smaller um, image there very tiny image here with which mainly the audio uh, because there are times when you want to really focus on the audio uh, synchronize it to something um, so that's that's a useful feature if I just want to show the audio then it will actually display it on there like that I can be completely without the audio or I can actually make it without showing the audio or the or the video part um, by clicking that that there as well the the the, the other um, useful thing the clip height again if you've got lots of layers lots of storylines etc and it's a very complicated thing then it's quite useful to reduce the, the the height so that you can see how everything sequences within your within your timeline so this is a useful a useful control but there is one thing that i would say um uh, that say with this 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 part here command z actually always does the fit to screen and that's that that's a control that you will come across uh, very often uh, in order to change the, the sorry control z in order to change the size uh, that's quite useful there then the next thing this this is a useful um, button here um, it's called the solo button you know that if i highlight a um, i turn that off there but but say i really want to just hear the, um, the say the audio to to this this clip here uh, without w w without this underlying uh, music then um, if I click the solo button it will just um, just play that that part there in fact let me just put the the audio level a bit up on that that part there to there we go okay so say I just want to you can hear the wind there but um, by pressing this solo button I can just look at any particular track uh, but I do have to turn it on and off I think to in order to solo the next one um, so that would just just solo that and you can particularly focus on any any particular track um, uh, any particular clip 
etc um, using that that button there now this other um, very useful button um, along here is the is the snapping button here now first of all let's just um, if I was if I turn that solo off there we go and we're back to normal um, if I'm if I'm doing a little bit of editing so I just want to move that back and forth um, then uh, if I have the snapping button on uh, what it tends to do is that when I'm you'll, you'll notice that there's a kind of magnetic attraction as that that line goes along there instantly um, clips into that and that is a very useful feature um, uh, later on because it, it instantly gets you to the correct part for your uh, trimming this um, button and uh, and you press N to snap to toggle the um, uh, the snapping on and off um, that's a very very um, useful useful switch now um, over here you've got the um, what's called the timeline index and this toggles on and off it's an index of everything that's in this area in the timeline so uh, it indexes all of these various um, components into the timeline and uh, it, it more or less in, in 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 sequence so if we look here um, uh, we look at our clips so there you have it daydream is the first audio um, clip which is just just there then it's followed by mv uh, I um, 0101 okay and then it, so this this is a list of everything that you've actually got in in the timeline and um, uh, and it uh, now this here is a storyline here in fact um, we'll get to storylines at another another time but um, then you've got the basic title and all these other things there so that that's a very useful um, index of of, of everything that you've, um, uh, you've you've got in the timeline. Um, similarly, if you've got tags or markers, chapters, etc., then the tags will actually um, show up here. Um, and then also by clicking on this here, you've got uh, uh, it will display all of the roles of the various things. Now, um, for example, say I, I just uh, uh, um, uncheck those boxes there then this is going to show me just my video. Now um, you will notice that um, uh, the, the, the ones that are high, that, that are, uh, are not blacked out are these, these ones in the, video, um, in the video line along here. Um, and we are including a still in this. Um, but, uh, and then for example, if I wanted to look particularly at titles, then this would just display all the titles in my, in my project. If I wanted to look at the music, um, this would um, uh, go to that. If I've actually added any soundtracks of dialogue, you know, then um, uh, th th that would show the location of the dialogue, and in which case, it's it's these the, the dialogue is comprised of the um, clips, uh, um, the video clips, um, ju just there like that. So um, uh, a very useful feature there. Um, now, incidentally, there's one, uh, there's a couple of other buttons in the timeline. This, these buttons toggle you through to previously open projects. So, if I'd been working on two or three other other projects, I could toggle back to those um, to that button there, and um, and that would show me my other other projects. Um, uh, so that's one other thing there. So there's a few features that we've uh, we've gone over. Uh, in this introduction to the time timeline, um, I hope you feel that you've you've uh, uh, progressed in in understanding a little bit more.